We're back. And ready to help you with more sea perch science. When engineers, especially those in the Navy, work on a submarine, they need to consider the same things that you do for your sea perch. They think about the materials and designs for submarines based on where the sub will go and what it will be needed to do. They also need to think about the buoyancy. Remember buoyancy? It's the force that helps keep things afloat. Your sea perch has to be able to stay afloat and be submersible, just like a submarine. Since submarines must submerge to great depths, engineers always consider the pressure submarines will be under when they are designing it. Right. As the submarine goes into the depths of the ocean, the pressure from the water affects the submarine. It's like this bottle of water. I poked three holes in the bottle and covered it up with tape. If we remove the tape from the holes, the water will come out. Pay attention. You'll notice that the water coming from the top is not as forceful as the water coming from the bottom. That's because with greater depth, the water pressure is higher. Well, with a submarine, the pressure will be different at the top of the hole than at the bottom. That's why engineers need to think about the pressure on a submarine. It has an impact on both the submarine structure and the people inside it. With your sea perch, the pressure will be there, and it will have some effect, but won't be an issue like with a submarine. What you do need to consider is the water's effect on the motor. I mean, putting any electrical device in the water can be dangerous, if not done properly, and your sea perch is no exception. If you had perfectly clean water, completely pure without anything else in it, it wouldn't conduct electricity. But because of impurities like sand, salt, and metals, it does. In fact, water is a very good conductor. Plain old drinking water can conduct electricity. Let's prove it. We have a battery here with a light bulb attached to it. Kind of like the first circuit experiment we did. If the circuit is complete, the bulb lights. We also have two wooden sticks, both covered in tin foil. If both sticks touch each other, as well as the battery and the bulb connectors, the circuit is complete and the bulb lights. There's no surprise there. But we do want to test the conductivity of water. So we're going to keep the sticks apart and dip them in some distilled water, which is pure. There's nothing to complete the circuit, so the bulb doesn't light. But if we add some salt to the water, even if the sticks don't touch each other, the salt in the water allows the circuit to be completed and the bulb lights again. It's just a different way to complete the circuit. Since water conducts electricity, and electricity can be dangerous, you have to think about safety. With sea perch, safety is a priority. We don't want anyone getting shocked. Electric shock happens when a body comes in contact with something that has a high enough voltage to send a current through your body. And it can hurt. Your body is mostly made of water, and as we've shown here, water does conduct electricity. That means your body conducts electricity too. So don't use your arms to complete any circuits. We don't want anyone getting hurt. Engineers think about electrical shock too. Engineers are always all about safety. Yours, theirs, ours, everyone's. Since you're all junior engineers, you need to make sure that you pay attention and practice science safely. One great way to do that is to protect yourself and your sea perch by properly sealing the motor. By sealing, we mean you've got to cover or enclose your motor so water doesn't get in it. You have to protect the motor from corrosion. Corrosion is the disintegration of metals due to chemical reactions with their surroundings. Ever seen a bike left out in the rain for a long time? That rust is corrosion. Rust is a common term for corrosion of certain types of metals. There's also galvanic corrosion. Now this occurs when two different metals immerse in an acid or salt electrically contact each other, like putting a motor in water. So, sealing not only helps make your sea perch safer to use, it also protects your motor from any damage. An unsealed motor will cause all kinds of problems. Your sea perch might not even run. At least you won't have to worry about the body of your sea perch. That's made out of plastic, and so it won't corrode. But submarines are made of metal, so corrosion is something that engineers have to consider in their designs. It all comes back to those material properties we talked about a few weeks ago. Engineers consider the effects that different materials will have on the final product. As you work towards finishing your sea perch, try to keep all this in mind. Everything you've already learned has to do with everything that you're going to learn. That's how engineers think. They know that all science is related. And now you know it too. So get to work on those sea perches. Have fun. And be safe.